right, as only community radio can do, we have got the one and only Ethan Tucker in the house from Olympia, fresh from the Roxy in Hollywood, where he performed last night. How you doing today, Ethan? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Man, so tell us, uh, what was the Roxy like? That had to be a pretty wild scene. Oh, it was great. I love the Roxy. It's a, it's a good venue. A good friend of mine does the sound there, so he always makes sure it sounds real nice. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. Again, uh, tonight, 8 p.m. at the Showbox, Ethan will be playing with J.J. Gray in Mofro. And then tomorrow night, if you have any reason to be heading down the coast, he will be in Portland at Revolution Hall again with J.J. Gray and Mofro. Two great chances to see the Ethan Tucker band. Now, is it, uh, is it a full band or are you performing solo for these It'll shows? be my full band. Yeah, it'll, That's be, fantastic. it'll be a good time. All right, the new CD is called Misunderstood, and we got plenty of time for talking. How about we hear a song? All right, all right. So uh, this first song I'll play is the first single from the record. This uh, song I wrote with Michael Franti called Crazy Tonight. <laughs> Try to express my soul, just let the music flow But I can't stop the ringing on the old telephone Cause sometimes, I think I lost my mind I got my pedal to the metal and my nose to the ground But I'm slipping, now where I wanna be I'm in the deep end and it's hard to breathe I'm going crazy tonight Tonight you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy Crazy tonight, you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy tonight. Tonight, you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy, crazy tonight. You're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy tonight. Put up at the bop bop, or sometimes I take a drive down highway once so I could ease my mind before the sun goes down because. Life changes every single day. I got to shine my light so I could find my way. Hey, hey, hey. Through the rain and the fog. The same old jobs got me working like a dog. It's got me tripping crazy tonight. Tonight you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy, crazy. Tonight you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy tonight. Tonight you're gonna see I'm going Crazy, crazy, crazy tonight you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy tonight but Could you ever save me? Could you save me? From my crazy self, I need a little help but up with the bar, we can hang out in the park and play guitar some more. Or we can hang out drinking by the corner store. We could call up Jay and tell him, bring the girls. Or we could dream up a plan to try to save the world. Because I don't know what's in this cup. But we could get messed up until the sun comes up. But tonight, I'd rather chill with you tonight. Because tonight you're going to see I'm going crazy, crazy. Crazy tonight, you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy tonight. Tonight, you're gonna see I'm going crazy, crazy, crazy tonight. You're gonna see we're going crazy, crazy tonight. We're going crazy, crazy tonight. Ethan Tucker live in the sunlit room. Man, I love that song. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> what a great tune. And uh, that's the first single off the new release, Misunderstood. Uh, if you're going to the show tonight, you can get yourself a copy there. If, uh, if you can't make it to the show, it's EthanTuckerMusic.com. And uh, you can get information on how to get that release there and on all the upcoming shows that Ethan has by heading to the website. Also, some great videos there as well. Now, uh, besides playing the Roxy last night, as if that wasn't cool enough, uh, this past weekend you played at the uh, Cali Roots Festival. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like you had quite an amazing weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was really a good time. It was uh, it was cool. Actually, the Green was there. or They weren't playing, but they were there. Um, they were kicking it. So, you know, just got to catch up with a lot of friends that, you know, you don't always see because people are always on tour right. different places, and all of a sudden you're walking and you run into, you know, <laughs> 
Oh, there's Michael Franti, there's G Love, whoever, you know. Yeah, you hang with a pretty cool group of people there, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> now, uh, it was, uh, besides your own set, which uh, which got rave reviews and uh, and a guest appearance from the aforementioned Michael Franti, he yeah. came out and uh, did that song with you, Yeah, right? Crazy, Crazy Tonight, Night. yeah. Uh, and then you joined him later in the night in his performance. Yeah. And uh, also... Uh, did a little bit of work with G Love and Slightly Stupid, so uh, yeah. that kept you busy all weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was, you know, jumping from stage to stage, but it's cool because it's, you know, like I said, I've worked with these guys a lot, so we've got good relationships, and we've just, you know, it's, it's just like, oh hey, so and so's here, let's jam, you know. So just having fun. That's awesome. Now, being uh, such a young performer uh, yourself, uh, is it? Has it been helpful to you to be able to hang out with people like G Love and Michael Franté and the guys in Slightly Stupid, and uh, and what have you learned from them? Oh, absolutely. I mean, working with them, you, you learn all kinds of different things. I mean, everything from just how to survive on the road, you know, taking care of yourself and and you know, staying healthy and and all, but also just things like you know, things I've learned from Michael Franté about just songwriting and and how to make how to take a song that's good and and make it even better, you know, that make it to that where was, people want to listen to it. That was going to be my next question, is, uh, is and how helpful has it been to have them as, as sort of mentors and, and co-writers yeah. uh, learning how to put together a song? Yeah, it's been great. It's been really cool. And, and they're the kind of guys that have been doing it long enough that, you know, they just, they know the tricks and they know the the thing, so they, they're not afraid to tell you when you're doing something that, it's not quite there, you know, but they'll help you work on it, too. Well, and, and the great thing is, you know, they have such a track record, um, you know, when they say, well, I'm not sure that's quite right. Yeah. You kind of got to listen. Absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah, not absolutely. just some stranger out there. Yeah, saying. absolutely. Yeah. I was working with Michael Franti one time and we were working on this song and I was coming up with this little beat and he looked at me and said, what are you doing? I was like, oh, no, I was just trying to come up with like this little like folk beat. I was like, what were you thinking? He goes, I don't know, I was thinking about maybe making a beat that people want to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's great, though. You've got yeah. that relationship yeah. where they can be so honest and yeah. nobody gets mad, no one gets their feelings hurt. Yeah. That's, that's pretty yeah. awesome. It's cool. Now, uh, for this record, um, you also had a, a producer. Um, yeah. I forgot to write down his name. Mario okay. Caldado. Yeah, Thank he's you. the man. Now, how important is it to you as a young artist to have... Uh, a producer that you trust like that, uh, that will, you know, kind of take you to task and say, no, I don't care if you think that's good. We need to do it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. I, the, having a producer really makes such a difference. I, I did, for, you know, I've been working on this album for a long time. I worked on it for about five years, recording and re-recording and re-recording. And the things that was cool to go in with Mario is he just, he knows what he's doing. He's, he, uh, he's made so many great records. That he knew the mu not only just how the song should be, but which musicians would be the right people to to feel it, to get the right connection with the musicians, and 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 just make a comfortable situation. He he um, he produced a lot of Jack Johnson stuff and Beastie Boys and stuff. And I ran into Jack Johnson at a at a festival, and I was asking, I was just talking to him about working with Mario because we were both we had both worked with him. And he said, um, he's like the cool thing about Mario is that you'll do something and think you're doing a practice take, and then Mario be like, all right, that's good, let's move on. <laughs> and you know, because you're comfortable, you're not, you're just thinking right, you're no practicing. Pressure. Yeah. So it was really cool because he knew he knows how to bring out of you what you got, and like, and if it's not working at that time, he's like, you know, we'll come to that later. Let's go get a cup of coffee, or let's go, you know, he really knows how to do it. And there's a reason he's got 13 platinum records hanging in his bathroom of the studio because he knows how to do it. You That's know? right. Now, having worked with uh, with a lot of different songwriters, musicians, and different producers. Uh, do you see a point, like on the next album or maybe the one after that, where you will produce yourself? Oh yeah, I do. Pr I do a lot of production myself. Um, I'm just, you know, it, it, I always need a little bit of work here and there, you know. So I just, it's good to learn. But yeah, eventually I would, I would love to produce for not only myself but also other artists. That's as well. the next thing I was going to ask. Yeah. Do you think you'd enjoy that that role? Is that no, something I, you? I would... love it. I love That's it. Great. I really do. Now. Uh, as a producer, if you can change uh, your, your hat for just a moment from being a, a musician to being a producer, uh, what would be the most important thing you would look for uh, to work with an artist? If someone approached you to produce their record, what would they need to have for you to say, okay? Well, the first thing they have to have is, is talent, really, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's that, I true, mean, that helps. <laughs> and, it's, and it's not to say that, you know, I mean, effort is good and everything, you got to practice and everything, but I mean, really to have to have the, the skill there first, because you know you can produce something that from nothing but it's it's never going to be 
more than like put together. You know, it's, it's just gonna be like a like Lego or something. It's not gonna be like a beautiful painting. It's just gonna be. Like, right. I don't know how to describe right. it. But. Well, as a producer, there's only so much you can do yeah, if that person exactly. doesn't have the yeah. proper building blocks for you to work with. Yeah, but you, I feel like yeah. you also have to be passionate about the project, too, because there's a lot of producers that can True. go in and be like, all right, you're paying me this much, and we're going to record it, and it's going to sound good. But then when a producer can really be like, no, I love these songs, like let's make them come to life, that's that's really the key. So you got to have that connection with the actual music and love it, I feel like. Now, going back to your musician's hat, as a musician... Uh, Fairly young, still early on in the game. Yeah. Uh, can you always tell the difference from the producer uh, whether or not they're really into it or just doing it for the paycheck? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it's pretty oh, yeah. obvious, oh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have that conversation off, off, off the radio. <laughs> I'm not asking for any names. I definitely don't want to throw anyone under the bus, get you in any trouble there. Yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. How about uh, how about we get another song and then uh, then we'll continue this conversation. Yeah. This song here is called Cool Kids. Um, Love this song. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm going. Well, teach me how to cool kids dancing and do with their hair. And teach me how to cool kids walk and the clothes they wear. And teach me how to cool kids talk and I could be, I could be, I could be a cool kid too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, well I could be a cool kid too Oh yeah, oh yeah, well I could be a cool kid too Well I don't drive a cool car, and I don't live like a rock star baby And I may not drink that crystal, but I know how to party till Monday comes And I don't got a girlfriend, and the one I want she plays me for a fool but you know, sometimes I wish that I could be a cool kid too. So teach me how the cool kids dance and do their hair. And teach me how the cool kids walk and the clothes they wear. And teach me how the cool kids talk and I could be, I could be, I could be a cool kid too. Some new jeans would they really make me lucky, lucky? And if I drove a drop top, would you wanna ride with me, with me? Cause I don't wear a Rolex and I don't got a closet filled with shoes, but you know I love some Snoop Dogg and I also love that old Bob Marley too. But you know that I. Well, I could be a cool kid too. So teach me how to cool kids dance and do their hair. And teach me how to cool kids walk and the clothes they wear. And teach me how to cool kids talk and I could be, I could be, I could be a cool kid too. Do 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 So I teach you how to cool kids dance and do our hair. And I teach you how to cool kids walk and the clothes we wear. And I teach you how to cool kids talk cause we're out, we're out, we're out cool kids too. Do 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 Olympia's own Ethan Tucker right here live in the sunlit room. That is just such a fantastic, fun song. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, uh, how old were you when you uh, first began to uh, play the guitar? Um, well, I was, I was nine years old. My mom had rented the movie Blues Brothers, 
and um, I watched it about 20 times, <laughs> and I, and then the, she rented the second one for me, and I watched that one, and I saw B.B. King play on it, and I said, man, that's what I want to do, and you know, that's... Are you, uh, are you self-taught, or did you ever have any uh, lessons of any kind? I mean, I never had formal lessons, but I got some books and stuff, and, I'm sure. and uh, you know, I'd watch a lot of, like, Jimi Hendrix films and Bob Marley films, and just try to make it sound the same. Yeah, that's important to do when you're young enough to know you can't do that. <laughs> that was determined. I said, I'm going to figure it out. It's taken me about 15 years, but I'm getting there. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, how old were you when you wrote your first song? Um, I was nine, but it, it was like this. Like, that was pretty much the extent of it. But I, I wrote it for my sister. She was getting married, and I, it had a bunch of words. I don't know what they were, but... She at least pretended to like it. So, I'm sure she loved it. <laughs> sure she loved it. Now, uh, so you knew right away from the minute you picked up the guitar, you pretty much knew that uh, that you wanted to not just be a player, you wanted to be a songwriter as well. Yeah, I just, uh, uh, yeah, that's all I ever wanted to do. So uh, other than uh, than B.B. King, uh, what other guys influenced you as a, as a songwriter and as a performer? Um, well, I've, I grew up in like a musical household and... My mom would always play, you know, obviously a lot of blues, B.B. King and Taj Mahal. But she'd also play, like, folk stuff, Joni Mitchell and, and Leo Kotke. And then my older siblings, it was kind of like the grunge era, so they would play, um, you know, a lot of, like, Nirvana, and they would play um, Pearl Jam and things like that. And so I never really got focused on genre, so I just um, was exposed to so much music. So I really gravitated towards people like Jimi Hendrix and Bob Marley. Ben Harper, Jack Johnson, and, and, and you know, obviously, like, the older stuff, too, Led Zeppelin, everything. I mean, just so much influence came in, so I can't really, the list goes on and on. <laughs> That's it. It sounds like you kind of had one of those old upbringings where there were really only two genres of music, the things you liked and the things you really didn't. Exactly. And that was it. Yeah, like <laughs> That's that. all that mattered. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, how old were you the, uh, the first time you had a, a public performance? Hmm. Where I was actually playing an instrument. Yeah, yeah, just uh, just um, you up on the stage doing your thing. Uh, I think I was about fourteen. Uh, we, I was playing bass in a band, and we we played um, at this like uh, school talent show thing or something. But you know, then I started writing songs, and so when I was sixteen, I started like really kind of taking it more serious and trying to play sing songs for people. And stuff. yeah, see, when you were sixteen, you realized the singer got all the girls. That's what. Happened. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, for, uh, for your new album, uh, Misunderstood, uh, the first single that you played for us earlier, uh, Crazy Tonight, mm -hmm. uh, was written and recorded with, uh, with Michael Fronte. Yes, sir. And, uh, and I was wondering if you would uh, share with us the story of, uh, of how you might met Michael, because I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. And, and just a follow-up, did that happen here in the state of Washington, or was it somewhere else? Um, well, there's a couple instances. Um, I lived in Idaho um, for a long time, and I would go back and forth. Um, my dad's side of the family lives here in Washington. I was born here. And and my mom uh, lives in Idaho, so I'd stay there. And um, so I was in Idaho, and he would come a lot. And so I would go to the shows, and I would try to talk to him, and and he was really busy. So finally, I just was like, man, I just gotta, I just gotta go backstage and t bring my guitar and play it for him. So I just before the show started, during load-in time and everything, I just walked in like I was part of the band, or, you know. <laughs> cool. And security just let me right through, and um, I just sat down and kind of waited for him and I, I knew he saw me and it's like oh man that kid's back here again what's he doing? <laughs> but um anyway I was like hey man I just want to show you a couple songs and and uh or at least just one song and if you don't like it I'll leave you alone and and he uh he's like okay so he let me show him a song and he's like all right show me another one <laughs> show me another one show me another one and then so he was playing a show uh, when I moved back here permanently um he was playing a show over at the uh I think it's a White River Amphitheater over mm -hmm. there yep. he uh I went there and I would gotten kind of to know some of the guys in the band and um, they just happened to see me. I was leaving. I didn't even think I was going to get to see him. And uh, they invited me backstage and I went there and I showed him that song Cool Kids and he was floored on it and that's when he was like, yeah, well, let's work together. That's cool. See, now, if, if I love the same songs that Michael Frante loves, then I know my taste in music is still hanging go. tough. There you uh, go. Because Michael's a pretty amazing guy. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> that is cool. And uh, the, the music that you guys uh, make together, because there's a couple of videos where you were sharing the stage with him. It's just, yeah. Yeah, we actually so just much put out life a and so much love in yeah. those videos. It's so yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, we just put out a music video for Crazy Tonight as well. It, it just came out um, on last Friday. So if you check on YouTube, 
Ethan Tucker crazy. And yeah. instead of going to YouTube, go to EthanTuckerMusic.com. Go yeah, straight yeah. to Ethan's own website, uh, and then you can get yourself a copy of the new CD while you're there, there too. Yeah. <laughs> See, I like this guy, man. <laughs> it's uh, it's really it's. Uh, I haven't heard the entire album. I've only heard three or four cuts, but. Every single cut was really, really good. That's why I was so excited when you agreed to uh, stop by and see us today in spite of your uh, your busy schedule. Oh, that's all right. It's, uh, it's Early just Early flight awesome. from L.A., but it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, tonight's show uh, with, uh, with uh, J.J. Gray, when you go into a show like this and... Uh, you know, this is kind of your home turf, so it's probably yeah. a little bit different. Mm -hmm. There's going to be plenty of folks that are there to see you. Yeah. Uh, but when you're opening for a more established artist like JJ, does it uh, does it change your thought process at all about how you're going to approach the show or what songs you're going to do? Mm, not really. Uh, I do kind of try to like think about the audiences of you know of somebody, but the thing of it is, I figure you know the people in the crowd that are going to like my songs are going to like them, and the people who are in the crowd that aren't going to like them are going to have fun watching the, the people they came to see. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's true. And, and you know, I, can, I have a hard time, and, unless something goes wrong equipment-wise, I have a real tough time thinking anyone could see your set and not enjoy it. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. All right. Uh, how about we get to one more song before we say yeah. goodbye? Yeah, for sure. This, uh, this is another song from the record. This one's called Tease Me. I always like to tell a story before I play it that I have a, a reoccurring habit of writing songs about young ladies. And, and sometimes I tend to find out that as time goes on, you sometimes have a little bit better relationship with the song than you did with the young lady you wrote the song about. <laughs> so this song here is called Tease Me. Tattoo flower on her leg And a lion bear here away And wouldn't it be nice if we were older And this didn't have to seem so wrong
made it rain Across the Fremont Bridge and far away There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, live in the sunlit room, Ethan Tucker. Uh, the whole band will be in tow tonight if you head out to the show box, uh, 8 p.m. start time. Uh, Ethan Tucker and uh, J.J. Gray and Mofro. Tomorrow night, uh, Revolution Hall in Portland. And then it looks like you've got about a, a six-week break uh, right now. Yeah, well, kind of. Yeah. And, and then uh, what what, uh, what do you got planned? Is it just personal time yeah. or you got some work stuff? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. I'm going to take some personal time and hang out with my family and stuff. Speaking of which, what's up, Yolanda? I know you're listening right now. Grandma, how you doing? <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, but yeah, I'm going to do a CD release party, a real small, intimate CD release party with um, my band in Olympia at Pints Barn. Um, and what's well, actually Tumwater, Washington. But, um, you know, it's going to be free show. So roll out, check it out, have a good time. Yeah, and uh, be sure uh, to head to EthanTuckerMusic.com uh, to get updates on any shows that are coming up. And uh, I know in July you've got a, a, a trek starting with the John Butler Trio. Yes, sir. And there's going to be two big shows down in Oregon, uh, one at the Brick Festival and one at the Oregon Zoo. So uh, if anyone out there is like me who likes traveling for summer shows, that's going to be July 25th and 26th, Ethan and John Butler. That's a pretty good double bill right there. <laughs> Uh, Ethan, any uh, any final thoughts or comments you'd like to leave with our listeners? Yeah, please uh, check out my Facebook page or follow me on Instagram at eTuckerMusic. Same on Twitter at eTuckerMusic. You know, uh, if you're taking pictures at the shows, feel free to tag me. You know, reach out to me on Facebook. I, I'm, I like to be really in, involved with people and engage with them. And so, and just keep an eye out, check out the shows, and um, and listen to the record. By all means, definitely check out that new record. It is, again, Misunderstood, and uh, that's on the uh, Stupid Records stupid label. Stupid Records, uh, yeah. Your good friend Slightly, slightly Stupid. stupid. Oh, label. yeah. So they that's, that's pretty stupid. cool. <laughs> and uh, by the way, not to take away from Ethan, but they'll also be performing in the region this summer, so check out for them, too. Uh, Ethan, thank you so very much for uh, making time for us today. I know it was kind of a rough haul to get all the way from Hollywood to Everett overnight, <laughs> uh, but we really appreciate okay. you doing it. Uh, all the best to you in the future, and uh, here's hoping that the next time you're in the region, you'll uh, you'll look us up and not be a stranger, man. All right, We'd love thank to you for having me, man. Thank you.